Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on engineering science and three working on revisions that is uh, on electricity. We have got the question on electricity. The first part of our question uh, that was to define Faraday's first law of uh, electrolysis. Uh, that is uh, two marks to define the Faraday's uh, first law. All right, so we've got our definition. Remember, this is to define so our definition is uh, given that uh, it states that the mass of a substance released or deposited during electrolysis is proportional to the current flowing through the solution. That is uh, what you are given for the Faraday's uh, first law. All right, so uh, that was our first part of our question. Uh, then on 7.2, we've got uh, four cells, each with an EMF of three volts and internal resistance of 0 0.5 per cell that is affecting per, per cell are connected in series. The battery is then connected to two parallel resi uh, connected resistors of the four ohm and six ohm and a uh, five ohm resistor in series. All right, so let us see exactly what we have got here. Remember that the cells, if they are in series, what we are going to have, we've got uh, four cells in series in this case, which is going to give us a battery, a single battery. These are three times uh, four. We've got four cells in this case. So we simply multiply to find our E in this case, that will be four times uh, three, which is going to give us 12 volts. All right. Then the internal resistance of this, uh, of these together combined now, uh, they are in series. Remember in series you add, so it's going to be 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 plus four times. So you simply multiply by four. So it's 0 0.5 times four, which is going to give us uh, two ohms. So this is what is going to build up our battery. In this case, we are going to have our battery uh, now as a single part, just combined together, everything combined, uh, giving us our E. So we said our E is going to be 12 volts in this case. All right having an internal resistance of two ohms. So this is having an uh, internal resistance of two ohms together combined. All right, so we are given that this is further connected. The battery is then connected to two parallel connected resistors, all right? Then to a series combination. So we're going to have two resistors which are in the parallel and then connected to a series. So meaning to say, you're going to have something like this. All right. So let's say uh, this is where we have our parallel connection here. So we are going to have a parallel connection, two resistors, which are in parallel. All right. So these two resistors, they are in parallel like this. All right. After the parallel combination, there is a series resistor now. So you're going to just have a series resistor after the parallel connection that so this is how our diagram is supposed to be like so please just draw a nicer diagram uh this is a sketch that i'm just having here so these are the two resistors that we have which are in uh, which are in uh, parallel in this case we can just say r1 and r2 all right so the resistors in parallel we are given that it's uh four ohms and uh, six ohms and the series is the five ohm. So we've got four ohms and uh, six ohms in parallel. So let's just say this is our four ohm, our six ohm. Then we've got the five ohm in series. All right, so this is the diagram that we can use to answer whatever question that you're given. The first part of our question was to calculate the total resistance of the circuit, and that is uh, three marks for that. All right, how can we have the total uh, resistance? Uh, according to our diagram here, we can see that um, these two resistors are in parallel and we've got a series resistor and also series to the, uh, the total internal resistance. So meaning to say our total resistance is going to be uh, the total resistance for the parallel combination plus the series resistor that we have of the five ohm, the series resistor, and uh, the total resistance that we had for the internal for the internal resistance, which is RRT in this case, or R. So how do you find uh, the parallel combination? Remember that resistors in parallel, it's a product over sum. So resistors in parallel, it's product over sum. 
meaning to say we are going to multiply R1 and R2. That's R1 times R2 over R1 plus R2. That's how you're going to find uh, the combination of the parallel circuit, meaning to say our RT, we are going to multiply R1 to R2. That is uh, 4 times 6 product over the sum 4 plus 6 plus RS, the series resistor of the 5 ohm. So you're going to add 5 plus RT, the internal resistance of 2 ohms like this. All right. So this is uh, what we can do. Uh, from this, we can simply calculate everything, guys. Okay. So if I'm to simplify properly, uh, the parallel combination, this one, is going to give me a value of uh, 2,4. So that's 2,4 plus uh, 5 plus uh, 2, which is 7, or you can just uh, add together. So this is going to give us 9,4 ohms at the end. All right, so this is our total resistance in this case. All right, so it's very, very important for you to locate it properly from your diagram. If you have got a sketch, then you it's easier now because you've got a sketch like this. So make sure that you just try to draw uh, a simple sketch, then you can use it to calculate whatever that you're given. Then the other part is the total current Flow. Okay, so what is the total current? We have got the total resistance. We have got uh, the total EMF in this case, which is our voltage. So we can calculate uh, current from there. That's 7.22. Remember that total current is the total uh, EMF uh, over the total resistance, which is uh, the total EMF for the battery is 12 volts. So our battery together is having 12 volts everything over the total resistance, the one that we calculated of 9,4 ohms. All right, so this gives us the total current in this case, which is going to be 1,276595 and so on, which is uh, to three decimal place is going to be 1,277. The five is going to change six into a seven. So this is our current, all right. So our total current, is going to be 1,277 amps. All right, so this is how we could have uh, calculated the total current from the information uh, that we have got or uh, with also the diagram. All right, then now the question is to calculate the current uh, through the four ohm resistor. All right, the current through the four ohm resistor. Okay, let us locate on our diagram where are we having the 4 ohm resistor? All right, this is where we have our 4 ohm resistor here. So we need the current flowing uh, at this point. All right, remember this is a, a parallel combination where we know that in a parallel combination, what we know is that the voltage here is the same, VP for the parallel combination. So with the current that is flowing, if we check from the current, there's a current which is the total current flowing this total current is going to affect our parallel combination, the wall of this part. It is going to be affected with this current. So meaning to say we can calculate the voltage of the parallel circuit uh, since we know that VP is the same. Uh, okay, VP is the same throughout. All right, so this is 7.3. Okay, 7.23. 7.23. So since the voltage in the parallel circuit is the same, we can use that as an advantage. So how can we calculate now this voltage of the parallel circuit? All right, we are going to use the total current of the circuit times the resistance that is uh, of the parallel circuit of the parallel part, this part here. And remember, we calculated this one from our formula RP from product over sum. Uh, this is the value that we calculated here from this value we get uh we got 2,4 so we are going to take the 2,4 that is our rp the the product over sum so rp is 2,4 so meaning to say we can use that to the current all right so our rp is 2,4 so that's 2,4 in this case all right but we need the total current which is uh, 1,277, our total current, it's 1,277, 1,277. All right, so this is going to give us the voltage uh, across the parallel section. All right, so the voltage across the parallel section is going to be something like 3,0648 volts in this case. All right, so why, why calculating this voltage? Remember I say this voltage is the same throughout. So if I'm having the voltage of the parallel section, 
I can be able to calculate the current across the four ohm reserve because I have the voltage and the resistance. Remember that if I've got voltage and resistance, I can calculate current. So the current through the four ohm resistor is simply going to be the voltage divided to the resistance, which is the voltage of the parallel connection, 3,0648 divided to the resistance that we are talking about, which is the resistance, uh, uh, the 4 ohm resistor. So we are going to divide by 4 in this case. All right. So this gives us the current across the 4 ohm resistor, which is going to be something like 0, 0,7662. So to three decimal place uh, for our final answer, it's going to be 0, 0,766, uh, which is measured in amps. Remember, this is current. So that is the current that we are going to obtain from the 4 ohm resistor. The same thing, if it was the current uh, across the 6 ohm resistor, you do the same thing. You divide by 6 uh, from the voltage of the parallel combination. All right. So that was the first section of our question 7. On 7.3, we are now given the resistor of a heating element. So take note, we've got uh, a heating element that he has got a resistor of uh, or a resistance of 60 ohms. And the current flowing through the heater in this case is 10 amps. So we are given the current flowing of 10 amps for the time of five hours. So this is taken in a time frame of five hours. All right. So let us see the question 7.31. Calculate the quantity of heat released. All right. So how can we obtain heat from this information? All right. So remember that uh, heat can be obtained from uh, power uh, because we know that uh, power is equivalent to the energy over the time taken, whereby our time is supposed to be measured in seconds. All right. So it asks we need to calculate this heat, which is Q. So you can uh, cross multiply. That's one times Q, which is Q is equal to P times time. That's power times time. Are we having the power? All right. So the time, remember, I said from this concept, your time is supposed to be in seconds. This is supposed to be in seconds. All right. We do not have the power again. But from this information, we can calculate power because we have got resistance and current. So from resistance and current, power is equal to I squared R. So remember, power can be calculated from any information. If you are given voltage and resistance, uh, current and voltage, it will be I squared. So it is just depends. with uh, That will be I times V for or VI. But in this case, we've got current and resistance, which is going to be I squared times R. So we can obtain power from there, meaning to say our power... Uh, or you can just substitute, let me just substitute direct into the formula. So our Q is going to be, which is the heat, our power, we said it's I squared times R. Uh, I squared, which is our current, 10. So that's 10 squared times the resistance, the resistance, which is uh, 60 ohms uh, times the time. We said our time is supposed to be in seconds but this time is given in hours. So what are we going to do? Remember, an hour is equal to uh, 60 minutes. Let's start with minutes. Uh, one minute is equal to 60 seconds. So meaning to say an hour is going to be 60 times 60, which is 3,600 seconds. All right. So meaning to say to convert hours to seconds, we multiply by 3,600. These are hours. So we're going to multiply by 3,600. So that's times 3,600. You have got, uh, this is your time. Five times 3,600 represents our time. So this gives us heat, which is our Q. Uh, in this case, we are going to have our heat uh, as uh, one, 108 million. That's 108 million in this case, which is... Uh, mega joules okay so if we divide by 1 million that's simply canceling the six zeros we remain with the 108 uh mega joules in this case okay so that is the quantity of heat which was uh being uh, released in this case then 7.32 we are now asked to calculate the cost if the tariff is 27 cents per kilowatt hour take note 27 cents per kilowatt hour. All right. This is how you calculate the cost. Simply using from, the, from this concept, you can calculate your cost. All right. 
7.32. If we are given a certain tariff, it means that our cost is going to be equivalent uh, to the kilowatt hour. So what we need is the kilowatt hour. Remember, it's a pay, kilowatt hour. So you multiply the kilowatt hour times uh, the cost per kilowatt hour, the one that we are given. So you're going to multiply to the cost per kilowatt hour. This is the easiest formula that we can actually work with. The kilowatt hour times the, because here we are given the cost per kilowatt hour to say, uh, the cost is per kilowatt hour, which is 27 cents. All right. So what we need is the kilowatt hour. Now, how do you obtain kilowatt? Kilowatt hour simply means it's a power measured in watts. That is what it, it simply means. Kilowatt hour. It's power, which is in kilowatts times the time in hours. That is what it simply means. So what we are going to do is... Uh, to find the kilowatt hour first. All right, where are we going to obtain our kilowatt? All right, so we need power in kilowatts first. All right, so from the power that we calculated, remember we say the power can be calculated from uh, this part and we didn't simplify this further, so we need this part. Remember we said power is I squared R this one where we have got I squared R this part, okay? So that is where, it, where, where we are going to take our power from. All right, so let's see if our power first in watts, all right? So power is uh, equal to I squared R. We have got resistance and current. So we need this power in kilowatts first, which is I squared R. So our current, remember it's 10 squared times the resistance, which is uh, five, which is, okay, our resistance, it's, a, it's, it's a 60, 60. All right, our resistance here, yeah, it's a 60. All right, so this is going to give us a 60 in this case. All right, so this will be a 60. All right, so that will be 100 times uh, 60, which is uh, 6,000 uh, uh, watts. All right, so this is 6,000 watts. But we need this in a, kilowatt kilowatt so kilowatt meaning to say we are going to divide this okay that's uh, a kilowatt in this case if we divide this we are going to obtain 6 kilowatt so but it's supposed to be 6 kilowatt hour so you multiply by the time in hours for you to obtain now kilowatt hour all right so for us to obtain kilowatt hour we are going to multiply 6 kilowatt times the time in hours, which is five hours, not in seconds, but this time you multiply by this in hours. So six times five is going to give us 30. So that means we've got 30 kilowatt hour. So this is how we can have our cost. So from our cost here, I said, uh, from this part, our cost is a kilowatt hour, which is this part, our kilowatt hour, which is 30 times, the cost per kilowatt, and we are given that it costs per kilowatt, it costs 27 cents per kilowatt. So we are going to multiply by 27 cents in this case. So that's uh, times 27. All right, so this is going to be 30 times 27, which is going to give us 810. Remember, this is 27 cents. So our we are going to obtain our money in cents, okay? But remember, if we divide by 100, we obtain our amount or the cost as 8,10 in rents. Okay, so this is how we can calculate the cost from whatever that you are given. All right, so that was our question, guys, from the information that we are given uh, on, on electricity. So these are the typical questions, actually, that you're going to have on our final exam. So let us continue to revise as more as we can. Uh, but for now, that's it from Amazon African Motives till we meet again.